I didn't realize how hot it was in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. I had Paulie check the weather there. In August, uh, you got 90 degrees, 90% humidity. No wonder the head ball coach had his shirt off yesterday at practice. I don't blame him. Coach joins us now. How hot is it down there, Coach? Uh, Dan, actually, it's been cooler than normal this year. Uh, it hasn't been that humid, and we practice at night. We just do those walkthroughs at like 10, 10 o'clock in the morning. So it's really been very comfortable. From uh, We go from like 7 to 9, 15, something like that. How much time do you get with the kids practice-wise? What's the NCAA regulation? Well, now in preseason – you 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 can have them here all day if you want, but obviously they get tired of watching tape and meeting and uh, tired of practicing. Uh, but we have what's called walkthroughs, and you can't even take a football out there. So you just mirror, uh, you know, just have a pretend ball, and you take the snap and hand off and just keep running plays in uh, really sandals and shorts. And if the guys won't take the shirt off, they can take them off. And then you get to practice, uh, you know, once a day in pads or shorts, helmet, shoulder pads is about what we practice in. There's so many rules, regulations with the NCAA. Mm -hmm. As a coach, just trying to keep abreast of everything that goes on, how difficult is that? Uh, Dan, I think it's very good. I think there's got to be a limit almost to everything we do in life. And uh, this, this gives coaches a limit. Uh, you can't beat the crap out of your players. You, you can't overdo it. And uh, I think they're good rules. I, I mean, I, personally, I've been sort of coaching like this my whole career. I've tried to protect our players in practice as, as much as possible. And uh, now they're putting in rules. That everybody's got to protect their players. And you're also looking – I I always know that coaches are looking for teaching moments to be able to say, here's an example, and this is how I can incorporate that into your life or your career. Is Johnny Manziel's story a teaching moment for your kids or, you know, Jadavian Clowney? Is, the, is, is it something that can be put mm-hmm. into play for everybody? Well, I think Jadavion is the example I talk about, how he's handled uh, all the praise and national attention he's had. And uh, he's handled it well. You know, he went to all the all, – well, if he missed a workout this summer, he made it up. He did do some travel that uh, he wasn't quite here. But he made just about all of them. And he's a good teammate. He's out there practice every day. He, he does what all the other guys do. And he did it all summer. Uh, he was low-key. I don't think he's – a, a nightclub guy. He doesn't mess with the Twitter. Uh, he he just he's a little he's low maintenance. Let's put it that way. But you have some of these kids who are stars that they're celebrities, and and I I've said I I know if Johnny Manziel's guilty of getting money for autographs or any of these kids are, mm-hmm. it's wrong. But I do understand that the NCAA is sort of stuck in the '70s. They have to understand that these kids with the money that they bring in, it's different. And there's only a couple of these kids in college sports, but Manziel's one of them. Braxton mm-hmm. Miller, or well, Taj Boyd, or any. How, how do we come up with a solution here that's equitable? Yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's a good question, Dan. And uh, of course, it hasn't been proven that uh, Johnny uh, sat down and did a signing and money was exchanged between the autograph guy and either his buddy, his pal. Can't call him an agent, <laughs> but his uh, personal assistant. Yeah. Uh, if money was exchanged, uh, then all these other guys, you know, Braxton Miller, Jadavion, A.J. McCarron, Taj Board, some of those guys who, who have value in their autograph, then they certainly going to have a right to do it in the future. So it's going to be interesting to see how this thing plays out. Yeah, I just I get concerned here that, you know, we're asking these kids, and it's one thing to get a free education. I, I get that. But how many guys bring in $37 million in publicity for their school like Johnny Manziel is credited oh, with? Oh, exactly. And I've gone on record the last several years now of trying to get some money for the college football and basketball players. You know, March Madness brought in a billion dollars this year, more than the Super Bowl, more than the NBA playoffs. Oh, it's just amazing how much money when I saw that. And, of course, college football, I think, uh, is the second most popular sport in the nation uh, next to NFL football. So, yeah, the money's huge. I've always said let's give them 3500 to 4000 somewhere in there. Let them have a little pocket change. And, and there's plenty of money at the BCS schools for that, but not the smaller schools. And that's why there may be some separation coming up here real soon. Steve Spurrier, the South Carolina head coach, joining us, Dan Patrick Show. You said separation. 
What do you mean by that? Well, the commissioners and the presidents are talking. I mean, they're talking about the, the major conferences maybe separating or forming another division of the NCAA uh, because obviously the smaller schools cannot afford to give uh, these athletes uh, much any money at all, but the bigger schools can. So, uh, and these kids could use it. Most of uh, the football and basketball players, you know, come from lower income families. Uh, they don't get money from home like uh, a lot of students do. So, uh, to me, they're the ones that are in need uh, of some extra money. Are you in favor of separate? Uh, if that's what it takes to uh, get a little money in the pocket of these guys who are earning so much for us, uh, Dan, they train all summer. Uh, the basketball kids, they, they're here playing all summer, and uh, they, they bring in a huge amount of income. And uh, whatever it takes to just get a little three to $4,000 so they can live like most of the college kids, I, I think, and, and can help their parents with expenses traveling to ball games. I think it would be a good idea. I also wanted your opinion, obviously, uh, when you made the move to the NFL and then came back to college, now you have Chip Kelly with the Philadelphia Eagles, much made of his offense at Oregon. What what expectations do you have with uh, Chip in that style of offense in the NFL? Well, I think he's going to be fine. Uh, f- from, what, from what I understand, uh, uh, when you watch those guys uh, practice and this, that, and the other on TV, I mean, he's totally in charge, and he's... He's got a good working relationship with everybody uh, right there at Philadelphia. And if they've got a lot of good players, he's going to be fine. Uh, you know, there's, everybody can't win, and sometimes there's good teams, average teams, not so good teams, and that's that's the way it is in sports. But I, I think Chip is obviously a good coach. He's got a track record, and uh, if he's got pretty good players, he's going to be fine. Why are all the offensive geniuses in college that you have great – pro Mm -hmm. coaches but they go to the college ranks to learn if it's the spread offense (laughs) you know like when leach was at texas tech or urban meyer running what he was running at utah uh why is that it does seem like uh there's more variety in the offenses in college and then they they slowly go up to the nfl and then of course uh sometimes uh the colleges we get we get stuff in the NFL like you can't hit anybody in the head anymore. Those head-on collisions are bad, and uh, the college has put in the rule that a player could be ejected uh, for a head-on collision. In the NFL, I think they just wait and find them a whole bunch of money, but we got that new rule in college. So it goes back and forth. If we see they're doing something that's smart and uh, they see that we're down here doing something smart, then you, you keep experimenting and try it, see if it'll work. Do you agree that Clowney, under the new rule, would have been kicked? out of that even though it was a bowl game no 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 they they re uh they revisited on that those referees his initial hit hit the guy in the chest and he sort of ricocheted yeah. up and uh it was not a helmet to helmet uh, although his helmet popped up the, the initial hit was in the chest area and then you know uh he ricocheted up and i, I think really the impact uh, is what knocked his helmet off uh, I was asked one time, Dan, does he hit your teammates that way? And I said, no, no, we have a rule. We have a rule. We don't clob the teammates. But I tell you, yesterday in practice, he came through clean. It was it was almost the exact play against Michigan. We ran that little power play, and the guard pulled, oh, and they no. and both of our guys whiffed him, and he he made that little inside <laughs> move, and he he ran into Brandon Wiles. Just he just knocked him over. He didn't didn't land on him or anything. Just boop. And Brandon got right back up. So, it, you know, it wasn't a mean hit at all, but he just popped him right over almost exactly like that one. These kids know you won a Heisman? Uh, you know, if you ask them, I don't know how many would know or not. Uh, a lot of times I give them a little history lesson on South Carolina football, but I don't, I don't give them much of a history lesson on me, that's for sure. Uh, you normally don't have coaches who speak out against other coaches. You're not afraid of tweaking some other coaches in the SEC, but when Gary Patterson of TCU called out Les Miles for letting his team vote on a player, whether he's going to be brought back and made eligible for that game, what was your reaction to that? Well, I thought uh, I thought Gary had a pretty good point. I mean, if you ask your your players, do you want this guy back on the team? He may have slapped a girl, got charged with assault, or something like that, and uh, they they may say, "Coach, we need him to beat these guys." <laughs> I would say, "No, no, we don't need him that badly." Uh, you, you know, you got to have rules in place. But you know, it's always interesting. Every coach, I guess, in the country is different uh, about their rules and this, that, and the other. Uh, I guess the only one I have that uh, 
that I live by forever is that if, if we have a football player that ever hits a girl, he is finished. He's finished here. It doesn't matter who he is. And we've only lost two uh, since I've been here in South Carolina. But uh, that, that, that's a rule that there's no negotiating or nothing on that. So, uh, But the others, uh, you know, you want to give kids a, uh, another chance if they've really messed up, things like that. So I, I don't know all the situation there. But have you ever said put it to a vote for your players – to decide on a player. Yes, I did. Uh, well, I didn't put it to a vote, but uh, uh, you know, I don't want to use the player's name. But uh, back in Florida, uh, I sort of kicked the guy off for something, and it wasn't—I mean, it wasn't terrible. But uh, the Brett, about three or four of the senior guys came back and said, "Coach, if it was up to you, I, you know, I know it's your decision, but we'd like him back on the team if, if you see fit." And we brought the player back as a walk-on. He had to pay his own way, and uh, he did very well. In fact, he played in the NFL about a whole bunch, and uh, was a good player for us. And he, he he earned his scholarship back after, I think, about a half a year. You got a national title team? Oh, if we get very, very, very fortunate, Dan, and the ball bounces our way, we're we're number seven in the country. We we got some unknown linebackers and players here and there that hadn't played much yet, uh, and we got to play a uh, we got to block better and do a lot of things. But uh, we've, you know, I, I tell people we, we've only lost two more games in two years in Alabama. They've lost one a year and won it all. We've we've lost two a year last two years, but uh, we we. Uh, and you know we'd we'd have to have some good fortune. We're not picked to do it, but uh, you know got got lucky here, there, and the other, and the ball bounced, and the other team lost one. And you know a lot of times your success depends on the other guys. What happens to them? Uh, I, I was telling somebody the other day in the Eastern Division, uh, we've gone eleven and one in the last two years. Yeah. Uh, six, uh, actually twelve and one. I'm sorry, twelve and one because we played seven games, and. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. We, we have uh, yeah, we've gone six and two and eleven and one in the division. But Georgia's won it every year because uh, they've only lost one game, and uh, we've managed to uh, in the division we've just lost one game. But we keep losing those western side guys, and that's <laughs> knocked us out. Well, good luck. Uh, mm-hmm. Hopefully, you avoid the heat there. Thanks for joining us, coach. Okay, Dan. Good talking Thanks, to you, sir. Again. That's uh, Steve Spur, South Carolina head coach. You would, just from the picture of him with his shirt off, you would think he was the guy who won the national title.